Hello, Phlebotomist. Khalil here, and I'm going to be going over what is a CLIA waiver and how to fill out the application to obtain your CLIA certificate. And if you're interested in starting your own mobile phlebotomy business, I have a link for you at the end of this video. So let's dive in. A certificate of waiver allows the facility to perform only tests that are classified as wave tests. As defined by CLIA, wave tests are simple laboratory examinations and procedures that has an insignificant risk of an erroneous result. So some examples of wave tests include dipstick urinalysis, urine pregnancy tests, and blood glucose monitoring. CMS maintains a complete list of wave tests I'll provide for you guys at the bottom of this video. But the main requirements for facilities performing wave testing are to follow the manufacturer's instructions and to have a current CLIA certificate. So now that you learned about the wave test, let's fill out a CMS 116 application to obtain our CLIA certificate. All right, guys, so this is the CMS 116 application, and this is the application you will need to get CLIA. So let's jump into each section so that you know exactly how to fill it out and we can move forward with getting our CLIA certificate. So let's dive in. All right, guys, so this will be your new doctor, Dr. Mark, okay? He has a brand new practice where he's offering strep tests, flu tests, glucose tests, even CBCs, but he knows for a fact that before he can even do these tests, he needs a certificate of waiver. So let's jump into the application so that we can apply for the certificate of waiver and actually get it, okay? So let's do it. <laughs> All right, you guys, so this is the CMS 116 application. You'll need to complete this application in order for you to receive your CLIA certificate. So first things first, you'll need to actually click the initial application box right there, your facility name, your tax ID number, your email address. Also, don't forget to enter your mailing address. So if you want to actually have your fee coupon sent to your mailing address, you have that option over here. So you can do it for your physical, your mailing, or your corporate. But most of the times you guys aren't a corporate entity, um, so you don't have to worry about this specific section at all. Um, and then you'll have your director sign right here and enter their credentials, and then you'll be able to go to section two. So I'll see you in the next video. All right, you guys, so Dr. Mark is here on section two of the application, trying to figure out exactly what certificate best fits his facility. So we understand he does strep testing, he does glucose testing, he does flu testing and CBC testing. So we know for a fact that he can't just go for the certificate of waiver. He needs a more moderate complexity for the CBC testing. So he's going to go for the certificate of compliance and move forward to the next section of the application. So I'll see you guys there. Yeah, so session three is pretty much asking, where are you performing these tests at? So we have the option for mobile laboratory and also physician's office. In this situation for Dr. Mark, we're going to do physician's office, which is number 21. And I'll see you guys in the next video guys so in this section specifically they want to know the hours of operation for your laboratory testing so if you're doing nine to five you can just put the times right here from sunday to saturday or if you're doing 24 hours you can just actually check off this little 24 hours seven days a week box right there and leave everything else blank and that's it <laughs> so i'll see you guys in the next video all right guys so this is section five of the application and it's pretty much asking where are you guys going to be located it's going to be multiple sites it's a single site are you going to be moving around so in this situation for dr mark he's going to be having one site and we're going to actually click this button right here and if you read closely it's going to say if no go to section six so that's exactly what we're going to do so i'll meet you guys in section six all right, we are at section six of the application. So this is pretty much telling you guys to actually fill in the wave testing that you'll be performing at your facility. So for this situation, we have Dr. Mark who's doing strep testing, flu testing, glucose testing, and all of these tests are wave tests that he can actually place in these specific lines right here. And also the manufacturer, which is so important. And I have that link provided for you guys as well. Also, don't forget to also enter your estimated total annual test. So that's about how many people you'll be testing at that facility. So they want to see an estimate. So normally around maybe 100 to you know 400 patients, who knows? But that's where you're going to put the actual annual amount of tests in that specific line. And I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, you guys. So we made it to section eight of the application where we're going to actually enter the moderate complexity test. So that's going to be the CBC. Because we got the other ones that are waived, so the strep test, the glucose test, the urine dipstick, and uh, the flu test, <laughs> those are all wave tests. But the CBC, um, that's more of a moderate complexity. So we're going to actually enter that information up there with the manufacturer. And of course, you're going to have that link for yourselves. And also down here, you're going to mark out the hematology, right? And then you're going to also enter the annual test volume. And that's pretty much it in this section. And then I'll see you guys in section nine. All right, guys, we are at section nine. Okay, so this section, I just want you guys to literally go with 
proprietary. Now, this is for profit. This is when you own, you know, 100% of your clinic and you're, you know, doing it for profit, of course, right? Now you have the other options for nonprofit. Then the other one is going to be ownership by the government. So those are the other two options, but most of the times people are picking this one, but you know, there's, these are the other options that you guys can also choose too. So I will see you guys in the next session. We've reached section 10 of the application, which is fairly the easiest one because you don't have to do that section specifically only because you're brand new to CLIA. You're brand new to this. You don't have a CLIA number. You don't have a laboratory to name, so you can absolutely skip this portion. What you need to focus on is the signature portion, okay? Signature and actual date, okay? Signature and date. Signature and date, okay? Uh, but make sure your director is actually signing. These are the people that needs to sign for you to get the CLIA certificate, okay guys? So, very important. Um, and also, if you learned a lot of information from this entire video, thank you so much for watching, and I'm hoping that you got enough value from this. Uh, make sure you tag a phlebotomy CEO or a nurse or a doctor or someone in a medical field who's interested in starting their own mobile phlebotomy business and DM the word coach so that you can get started with your mobile phlebotomy business. So, this is the CLIA waiver. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, have a great day and talk to you guys soon.